Hey everyone, I'm Jack Watson, and today we've got a special Illustrator Challenge recap. And today is all about you and the community looking at the amazing work you've all been doing. I've got a bunch of work I want to highlight from our Discord. It was really hard to choose since there's so much. If you want to join our Creative Cloud community for Illustrator on Discord, there's a link right below me in the description of this video. But before we get into it, I also want to invite you all to the live chat to ask questions. If there's something you had trouble with on a challenge or something you saw that was really cool and you wanted to know how it was done, you can join our live chat here at behance.net slash adobe live. Everybody in the chat is saying hello. How's it going, friends? Megan is here. Umicorn says donut queen time. Yes. <laughs> um, so uh, I've pulled up a bunch of challenges. Um, these are all for our first one. Uh, this was our album art challenge here. Uh, this one was super cool. We've got art by Junction here. I love the color combination and I love the overlapping colors, the use of kind of like transparency to have some of these colors come through using blending modes, I think, on that text there to have it be a little bit darker. So yeah, this one was really awesome. Great work by Art by Junction. Hopping over here, uh, this one here uh, by Three Dines. I don't even know, this one I'd have to even think about and maybe play with to figure out how they did this background blur. I think maybe it's a combination of um, blend with a gradient or a gradient mesh and a blur effect on it. So this one is super cool. I uh, also love the like sort of Y2K style text and graphics in this one. So this was uh, three dimes here if you want to check that out. Wade, how's it going, Wade? Welcome, everyone. And uh, Megan, Megan, who I believe is in our Discord or are in our live chat right now on Behance. Megan's uh, album art here was really cool. So much depth captured in how the kind of blendy, swirly, distorted shapes are going over top of this like sphere at the center, along with these kind of blended lines in the background, this sort of like dynamic angle that we've got going on with the kind of two-tone and the like higher uh, contrast yellows kind of in, in the pop, uh, really, or in the front, really pop. Yes, Megan is in the chat. <laughs> awesome. All right, this one here, I think Franck might be in the chat too. Franck did this album art and it is so cool. This like dripping text using the um, uh, warp on the letters is such a great idea. And I love just overall the like style of this text, very retro wave, uh, the colors, the kind of neon sun and like this blend down here of the dark lines kind of creates this really cool landscape but also gives a really nice spot for that text to stand out over top. So great job to Frank. And then over here, I've got one more album cover I want to show. This one, uh, this was great. This was by Incredible Ice Bear, and they did a mock-up of theirs as well as a standalone image. And I just love the like foreshortening on this illustration and the way they use kind of like blends to create this sort of surreal landscape with the elements on this uh, sort of turntable popping off. Really great stuff here. This was by Incredible Ice Bear. So I'm going to load up uh, our second one here. Ooh. I don't know what happened. There we go. So this was the, um, oh my gosh, I forgot what challenge this was. Isometric art challenge. So while some of these load here, Rick is also in our chat. This was Rick's isometric art. This was great. I loved that Rick went really above and beyond here doing like all of the states in the Southwest US. So we've got uh, not only the states, but then like different landmarks for the state. We've got Route, Route 66 here. Really cool stuff going on. Um, I love just like, yeah, that you went really, you pushed yourself to do um, a bunch of different states and different buildings here going really, really above and beyond on the challenge. Nadia, Nadia uh, uploaded their work today, and these are so cool. Um, these isometric neon buildings. Um, Nadia, if you're in the chat, let us know if you used the scale shear and rotate and you used the grid to make these. I really, really like the lighting on these. 
the like uh, bright colors through the windows really stand out against the kind of overall dark scene and also just has a lot of really nice like it looks like it's night because of the dark values in kind of like the buildings overall so Nadia also did and I want to jump ahead here to show off Nadia's uh, mandalas for challenge 9 really really cool stuff here lots and lots of layering going on Great use of the brushes. Um, I like how you kept this kind of like single uh, single color for the um, shapes for your brushes and then you used a gradient in the background to have that kind of like little bit of a pop of purple out to that darker sort of blue around the edges. Really, really cool uh, stuff, Nadia. So that was Nadia. Nadia posted today. Uh, and there's Rick. And then um, this is Umer. Umer also did, this is again, the isometric building challenge. Again, really pushing, pushing yourself here to do a lot of different shaped buildings. We've got some cylinders, circles, we've got some uh, trees happening. And then the car over here kind of in the foreground. Um, I know that I, I posted a little bit of a tip here for working with the car, but if you're working with more complex um, shapes like this. I find it's easier to work with one side as if it's flat and straight on and then do scale shear and rotate to create it in the side perspective. You can then kind of copy that and like move it out to draw the in-between shapes uh, for your car there. So hopefully that was helpful uh, in getting you on your way to constructing the car. If we take a look at Nadia's piece here again, I'm just going to zoom in. You can see that there's a, a little bit of a car here in a similar style. Uh, Nadia's taken the side of the car, drawn it out flat, and then um, put it in perspective. So, this was Andre. Andre did the all of Iceland um, for the isometric challenge. So again, really, uh, you guys really pushed yourself with this one, and I was really impressed to see. I know this wasn't a uh, an easy challenge for sure, um, but you guys really nailed it. I love the uh, details on all of these landmarks in Iceland, the um, the different buildings, and then even adding the text kind of in perspective is like a really interesting idea to me is like the map markers. So really cool stuff. Andre, I don't know if Andre is here, but. And then Sarah, Sarah is in our chat. Um, this is great. I love the um, that you focus on one building instead of doing a full on map here and just like so much detail, like these little uh, string of lights or whatever these are, like these little hanging uh, accents on the house. Lots of detail in there. I like how you indicated the texture of the bricks without drawing every single individual brick on here. Um, it kind of gives the impression without feeling too overly detailed, especially since the rest of your illustration is kind of a flatter style. You're just kind of indicating to the viewer that like this is brick without, you know, making it sort of too busy for the scene. So everybody did a really great job on this isometric art challenge. Like I said, I know this one was a little bit more technical. Uh, but I think you guys really, you guys, you guys, you guys did a really nice job uh, capturing this kind of effect um, through all of your work. So you should be very proud of what you guys all did. All right, let me hop on out of here and I am going to open up. This is challenge three. This was the um, drawing the coloring page using the width tool. Um, Again, I know this one was also a little bit challenging that the the illustration, I know there's a lot of people who were like, oh, I'm not a, a really an illustrator, but you guys, you did, you did a really great job. Um, the goal was really to learn how to use the tool and just have fun and experiment. So if you don't, you know, you don't feel like you got, you know, quite the result you were hoping for, um, just keep practicing with it. Just keep practicing. So this is Seema. Seema did sort of like one of these... Uh, it's like a, one of those playhouses, like kids' playhouse. I really, really like the lighting that you captured here, getting that like, like lighter highlight hitting the top of the roof with the darker underside here, um, sort of showing shadow and lighting, just using line, you know? Uh, and all of the details here as well, using the lighter line work on the details for the roof and the side here to kind of indicate some texture uh, while keeping the main areas of the structure a heavier line. That kind of is a, a helpful little 
tip for making a coloring page. You can use lighter line work on the texture so that, that people know like, oh, I can color over this, right? And you use the heavier line for the areas that you want people to like fill in separately. So that was SEMA for challenge three. Uh, Megan again with the uh, coloring page here. This was so intricately detailed and I would love, I said I wanted to print this out and like color it in myself. I never did get the chance, but the the small areas that you created, like it creates such a, a satisfying coloring page to fill in, right? Like you've got all these little tiny areas where you could add a, a whole assortment of different colors um, to build out this page. And then I also love how you used the tapered lines here to indicate where the, the letters of the script kind of fold over themselves, right? You're kind of like showing that these letters are really, really wide and just kind of indicating where they break to fold. So that was kind of a cool idea there. And then Umer, I, this fish was so cool. Uh, the way that you used the uh, tapered lines here on the fins to kind of give that, it gives the impression that there's movement in them, right? Like there's, these are going folding back and these are coming forward. Like really great use of uh, the tapered lines here to indicate those folds on the fins. And then I also like how you kind of added the, the little uh, scales on the side of the fish. This one kind of reminded me of um, the rainbow fish, if you guys know that story. I would love to see this one colored in with all kinds of different multicolored little uh, scales on it. So, Yes, and way to saying, dig it, colors would really make this pop, pop, pop. Yeah, I think you were talking about Megan's here for sure. And then Andre again, Andre did this little cottage here and I, I just liked the, the details on this. I liked how the windows were a little bit more organic, like everything about this structure feels really organic. It feels very, like, the line work is uh, really, really, uh, I don't know, like, it, I just really like the line quality on this. Uh, the wood grain that you captured along the side, again here, just kind of indicating that texture. Uh, showing that this is made out of bricks, but not maybe not every brick, or maybe this is like brick and stucco. So there's like a mixture of brick and uh, you know flat areas. So I also again really like the the tapered lines that you added in here on the clouds. They really give them that like really puffy puffy kind of look to them. Really soft clouds. Um, yeah, great job, Andre. And then finally, oh, Abraham. Abraham, this was so cool. Um, I don't, the, the line work is really cool in and of itself. Like there's a lot of, uh, you did a really great job capturing the forms on this for sure. But the, the, the colored page, which I will show shortly here is also super cool. Um, but yeah, the, again, like really nice job capturing the forms on this structure. Uh, using those lighter and heavier lines again to indicate the overall shape of the submarine and then using thinner lines on the inside of the windows to sh add some depth in here, um, just adding some details. Really, like, this is kind of a, a crazy shape to kind of get looking correct in terms of perspective, but you really did a nice job capturing the perspective there. And then these bubbles along the top, too, again, are really, really fun with the um, tapered lines to kind of show the depth that they've got. So great job on challenge number three, everyone. Alrighty. So now we're moving on to challenge four. This was the, co this was coloring. So we did a coloring page and then we colored it all in here. So I've got a couple that I pulled here that I thought were really nice. Um, and you might see some repeats from the previous set where people had made their line work and then colored it in, like the case for Andre here. So Andre not only colored in their coloring page, but they used the recolor art tool to create three different uh, color variations, which is really, really fun. Sort of like different seasons or different times of day for this house, right? So the uh, for and also went about, and also filled in the entire background all of these stones and and you know adding the cast shadow from the house that's a, something I really really liked about Andre's piece here is that um, they used the light source of the sun like right in their image and then you can see that they considered 
how those cast shadows would fall depending on the placement of the light in their scene. So that one, that was a really, really nice kind of detail. Again, following the structure of their house, right? They've got the thinner line work here, heavier line works on this side to indicate the shadows. So welcome, Stoney. Stoney says, oh, sorry I'm late. You're not late. You're just, you're right on time. We're just looking at everybody's work and hanging out here. So again, if you have any questions about anything, please ask, please let me know and I can pop open Illustrator and we can take a look at something. So here we go, Abraham. This was such a great finale to this coloring page here. I'm going to open this full page so you can see it. I, <laughs> I just love the direction that um, they took with this. Uh, the original just kind of, it, the, the original was really nice, but I feel like this just kind of take, took it to the next level. Uh, framing the submarine using the Kraken, you know, tentacles around, coming, like, ominously surrounding the submarine here. It really fills the space of the composition really well. And also just, like, the background details here, using these waves of color to kind of indicate we're underwater and add a little bit of depth to the scene. The, the um, propeller motion with the motion lines in the background. All of the detail, I don't know if you can even see it down here, all of this detail in the landscape that we've got going on. There's just so much happening in this illustration that they did, and I just really like the the lighting on the with where they used the gradients on the window to capture that material it's really nice stuff yeah umicorn saying the bubbles are so good yes the bubbles are also just really great i don't know i think they probably used um a gradient for this or a gradient with maybe like a blur or something maybe a um inner glow on the uh, uh inside edge or something so yes, and Stoney's saying I really like the tentacles. Yeah, that one was super cool. And that was Abraham. And then we had uh, Satlin. Uh, Satlin took the treehouse and colored it in. I really, really liked Satlin's color palette here. Uh, it was a little bit sort of surreal with the like pink in the tree. It also kind of reminded me of like cherry blossoms maybe with that color in the tree. And I just liked how they used uh, colors, again, in the background here to add a little bit of depth and just kind of indicate maybe something is happening in the background. Uh, you know, adding a little bit of mystery to our story with the uh, highlight here on the tire swing. So, yeah, the colors on this one are really interesting to me and also just the kind of story they were telling. And then Megan, this was Megan's uh, coloring piece here of those flowers, making some <laughs> changes to make this a little bit easier to color in. But yes, Megan also did a couple different color variations of these flowers here, and they all are so fun. Um, I really, really like how all of these have kind of a nice mix of complementary colors. So we've got like these purples and greens going on and the oranges um, and also the use of the gradient in the background again to kind of like fill that space out and make it feel complete right instead of having just like a plain white background there's a little bit there's some color back there to make it feel like this coloring page is kind of filled in and there's maybe some depth happening in the background so but yeah again like super super intricate super detailed uh, and I love the recolor artwork that you use to create the different color variations. And then Sarah. Sarah and the cat here. Sarah did two different versions. One more realistically colored, as, as she said. And another one here that is a little bit more fantastical. A little bit uh, <laughs> Lisa Frank. Um, I really like how you incorporated the brushes, I think, here to create the texture on the cat to, like indicate those stripes and a little bit of that like fur pattern and then again using just simple circles in the backgrounds to kind of fill out the composition and make it feel like there's something for our eye to kind of move around in this space um really good, nice work sarah all right how are we doing we are up to challenge five let's see what we load here. Challenge five was the YouTube thumbnail. Uh, I like how Andre took this in their own 
direction here uh, and used a created a cooking show using their own image and using um, shapes to mask out the image here and using those same shapes repeating them in the background also just kind of framing the text with that those shapes to kind of like focus your eye on that text really nice use of composition there uh, this was Mer Viper. Mer Viper, again, kind of making it their own with their own image and their own sort of theme here. This Camp Pathfinder, I thought this was kind of fun, using the arrow to lead your eye from the title here to the text. Uh, having this text be a cropped photo of the um, camp sign was really fun, I thought, and also just kind of like the overall red matching the red tone in the um, sign was a really nice way to tie those elements together. Seek Bobby coming in here with the puns and using the donuts. This one was a lot of fun framing the text here with the two donuts at the top and around the center here. I really liked how you used full color here to really emphasize the uh, donut tray and keeping these in kind of like the same pink as the background. I think this one does a really nice job again of like creating that circle leading your eye around from the image to the text and then back through. Umer again here. Uh, this one was fun because it looks like you used some 3D effects on these te on the text here. At least, at least I think so to create that sort of 3D donut and the 3D uh, go nuts here. Um, also, a great job pulling the colors from the images to keep everything feeling consistent and with a, a similar color palette. And then we had Hugh with glazed and confused for so long. I really liked the cropped hand here for the O holding up the donut. I just thought that was a lot of fun. Uh, so great job everybody on that one. Great job Hugh. Oop. And this was the logo challenge. This was Satlin did some uh, cherry blossoms here for a beauty spa and put together a little color palette at the bottom and um, added two variations, a uh, one color gray and a full color pink. And Alex is saying, can I ask you something? Yes, go ahead, Alex, you can feel free to ask. Uh, Umer, again, I, this one was great. There's so much detail going on here with the 3D effects. Uh, I don't even know uh, how you managed to capture all that faceted sort of metallic inside of the inflate here on the outside of the letter. Great use of space, fitting the, that tool, the compass, kind of inside of the A. Really, really, really nice stuff, Umer. Um, Umer did a great job with all of these challenges. And then Frank. I loved Frank's logo. This was, like, so cute. Uh, I love the moon sh shape fitting into the space, how the drip of the ice cream is kind of covering up the O here. Um, to connect the two elements. Very, very fun. Very, very, I love the, the sort of Neapolitan color gradient on the ice cream itself. Uh, so that was Franck. Gerard. Gerard made like this little camera aperture for their photography brand. Um, using the, or not camera aperture, a camera lens for their photography brand at the center of this camera silhouette. Um, I thought that they did a nice job coming up with the different logo concepts for themselves and also placing it inside of that shape. And then Sarah. Sarah did this cute uh, coffee brand. Uh, I really liked all of the different color variations. Lots of thought went into this logo presentation or this branding presentation. The colors, the font exploration, lighter versions, darker versions, full color, like really, really thoughtful brand process here. Welcome, Odari. Seven. This was the character sketch challenge. Umer, uh, I love that Umer did the dog as an example and then took it out and did their own here. So they created this little astronaut character. I'm thinking that the sketch is on the right and then the final is on the left here. I like the use of gradients, especially in this helmet, to capture that material. So great job, Umer. Frank, this one was so good. I just don't even know. This was so good. I love that you shared your sketch with the shapes over top, as well as your little color palette here. And then the final here is just, I love seeing that you added the background and the shadow to help ground your character in the scene. 
and just all of the little details that you added from those shapes to build out the character, the round corners and everything. This one was so fun. Rick here, I love that Rick sketched this just on a sheet of, of scrap paper and then put it together. Um, this, I just, I really liked the sketch here and I really liked how you captured the personality, the texture on the bandana and some of the highlights you added to the face and to the ears to help give it some shading. And then, um, again, Mr. EMX here uh, did a really nice sketch, also including color in their sketch, and then built out their character over here. They actually did two. They did this little axolotl here, and then they also did a full person up here, which was really fun. And then Megan did their dog. I love the texture that you captured on the fur pattern here. Like, I love seeing the photo next to the final. It's really, really great so we can get a comparison. I think you did a good job capturing the sort of facial expression and personality. And then I think the last one we'll have time to look at today is Ash. Ash did these, the, the dogs here. They did all of them, which is pretty impressive, impressive, I must say. So great job. I love that you shared all of your color palettes and um, that you did all of the dogs. So, <laughs> all right. So thank you everybody for uh, hanging out with me uh, today and for joining me for these illustrator challenges. I hope you all had fun learning, growing your skills, in trying new things. Uh, give yourselves a big pat on the back. You should be really proud of the amazing work that you all created. Uh, but the fun doesn't stop there. We've got more live content uh, after me today. And we're live every day, 11.30 a.m. Pacific time at behance.net slash adobe live. So stay tuned and uh, for more live content. Bye everyone.